So thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the introduction, Sona. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk for a little minute first and then introduce Elise, who's the expert from We Make It. Um, so as um, Sona said, I'm part of the Triple Project. Um, I've been working in Work Package 3, which has been looking at the sort of user requirements for the platform. Um, and basically the Opera's crowdfunding service is going to be one of the innovative services um, of uh, Go Triple. So you can see on this slide just where Triple sits in the whole infrastructure. Um, we're kind of part of Opera's um, and Go Triple, um, the, the, the funding, crowdfunding platform is one of our new innovative services that are being developed for, for the platform. This slide just gives you a little bit of information. Um, it gives you the Opera's vision, which is to help to make open science a reality for research across the social sciences and humanities. And the map here you can see is the sort of wide reach of the various Opera's members across Europe. Um, so I think there are a total of 53 different organizations um, across uh, 18 different European countries. So quite wide and, uh, you know, it's got a really good reach. So the fact that the, the crowdfunding service is going to sit within this sort of wide ranging infrastructure should really help to kind of get the, the kind of research message and the, the research out there and, and gather participants and, and interested people. OK, so as I already said, um, the, in the Opera's crowdfunding service is one of the new innovative services of GoTriple, um, and it will be the first um, European crowdfunding platform that's really dedicated to social science and humanities topics. And so there are other crowdfunding services, but none addressing specific SSH subjects. So this one is quite new in that respect. Um, so as we said, it's, it's been developed with uh, in collaboration with the professional We Make It platform, which is a wider, um, broader um, crowdfunding platform that does all sorts of different types of uh, crowdfunding. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think they have a, a really kind of a wide amount of visitors. I think we've got the number down here as it been, I think it's 300,000 monthly visitors. Um, and 155,000 monthly users. Um, and as we said, it's the, there's also, um, the channel is really dedicated to strengthening the connection between social science and humanities and the wider society. Um, what we're going to say as well is that the, there's a, a, a support service which is called the Science Booster Team. And this is part of We Make It. Um, and anybody who's looking to possibly create a, a campaign um, would get support from this science booster team. So why would you be thinking about crowdfunding? Um, obviously there are more traditional ways of getting funding but we all know kind of quite how long and laborious some of these can be uh, and sometimes it can be quite a rigid um, you know sort of quite uh, ring-fenced way of you know you have to be fitting into the specific topic that, that the um, that, that more traditional uh, funding would actually give you funding for. So the crowdfunding may be a way to get around, you know, if you don't actually fit into any of these other niches or sorts, it might be a, a way of getting something that's a little bit more different funded. Um, it's a really great opportunity to create a lot of awareness for your project. Um, and it could be that the, you know, the project that you're proposing is really innovative. Um, and it would just be a great way to kind of get a lot of uh, interest across Europe and create uh, a community around this, given that the, the kind of platform is uh, you, you'd be helped to, to have this, uh, um, you know, your, the awareness campaign um, and you'd be able to get the social media um, influence and expertise and the reach. So there'd be a, a definite uh, way to build a big community around, around your research project. So how do you go about applying um, and who is eligible to apply? Um, so basically it's any researcher or, or researchers, group of researchers in Europe or within a European institution. And what you require would be two letters of support coming from researchers who are out with your own institution. 
um, the research topic must be from the social science and humanities domain. Um, and this topic would be proposed initially. Um, it would then actually go through a process of validation. So which takes two to three days, I think, but it's a validation by the triple advisory board members. So this is just talking you through the, the steps. Um, so the projects will be validated, as I said, um, by the experts on the triple advisory board. Um, and this process is relatively simple. It shouldn't take more than a week. Um, and the validation process actually has three potential results. So your, pro your project could be considered eligible straight away. It might be um, ineligible, but maybe just needs tweaked. So it could be you know, ineligible that you're able to resubmit or it's, it could be deemed ineligible. So those would be the three outcomes, but you'd be informed of this fairly quickly. Um, um, after this, if you're, you know, you've, you've been granted eligible, um, then you'd go ahead and uh, prepare your crowdfunding campaign. And we expect that that process would take round about, you know, sort of three to four weeks um, up to a month. Um, so that would be the, you know, you'd be supported during this time. Um, and then after that process and it's all, all finalised, we would uh, the campaign would be published on the platform. Um, there'll be a communication campaign, um, and hopefully to you know to support you to get the funds um, with the kind of within the Opera's research infrastructure. So these are just some examples of what we make it um, current crowdfunding projects that, uh, that have been. Um, I think these ones have actually already been funded. So I think this one we can see here, which is about support for Ukrainian journalism. Um, and we can see that this one actually met its target. Um, is this in, I think it's Swiss francs, isn't it? The, the, the CHF, it's not Euros, it's Swiss francs because I think the, the platform is based in, in Switzerland. Um, but yeah, so this one reached the target of 56,000. Um, no, actually its target was initially 30,000, but it, it obtained a lot more. So it's got more than the initial target. Um, so quite a successful campaign. And obviously you can explore these by going to the, the We Make It website yourself and having a look. It's just to give you some examples during the, the talk here. Um, so this one is another one that's about education for um, young people. Um, and this one's also met its target. Um, I think this one met the target um, on the 10th of May. Um, so another successful example. And another one here, which is about sort of eco-friendly shop and restaurant guide. Um, so that one will be sort of in production and that one was actually concluded um, at the end of March this year. Okay, so this one is the first example of the actual operas crowdfunding. This is the um, one that's been put forward um, on our, our own channel that we're just launching. Um, and it's about supporting Ukrainian editorial staff. Um, so there's a lot of buzz about this at the moment. I actually went on myself this morning and had a look and, and donated. So it's, it's kind of quite simple to take part and to donate in the, pro in the um, you know, so if people are, it's not a difficult process. You don't have to be logged in. It was really quite simple. Um, so yeah, that's a good example of um, an initiative that, that will support um, Ukrainian editorial staff to keep going with the academic uh, you know, production of material in this really difficult time. Okay, so the information about what would happen um, if you create a campaign, what then happens with the money that, that comes in from, from the crowdfunding? Um, well, the funds can either be sent to an institutional bank account, if you're affiliated to a university or research institution and that's what you prefer, or they think they can also be sent to a personal account too. Um, so you'd have that option. Obviously, the results of any research that's that's going to be, you know, funded um, has to be submitted um, by a report by the, the project leader. Um, and I think that any results of this research should be published by open access, so they're freely available at the end of the, the research project. Uh, and any main information on the project um, should be shared um, for communication purposes. And this will be kind of really part of the sort of communication campaign and putting together a really good story about what the research, you know, what the research is aiming to do. 
um, and giving people enough information so that they want to they want to be excited and to actually fund the project and uh, you know get you get your research funded. So I think that definitely the first five projects uh, would be supported by this dedicated uh, communication campaign, which really increases your chance of getting funds. So I would, if you're thinking about doing a, a campaign, I would recommend that you sort of go ahead and get in there and be one of the people who gets this extra support at the beginning. Um, so you might be wondering who is the crowd, you know, who would be funding um, the crowdfunding campaign. And I think basically the, the, the first port of call who you would be looking at, it would be your immediate sort of friends and family, but also the wider community. So obviously, you know, you, the wider you can reach people on social media and, and other things, the more people you'd reach. Um, so you could get like the local people, neighbours. Um, and of course, if your if your project's on a, a, a specific um, topic that would be of interest to specific groups, then those groups would be a good target. So it's about identifying who your your kind of target audience would be for that project. Um, so it'd be great to kind of reach these interest groups um, on your communication campaign. And also, the the We Make It um, platform has uh, been in existence for a while now and has this this big community. So you'd be reaching that community as well. Um, you get a lot of people who just like to, to participate and uh, the serial backers who just like to feel like they're doing good across the community. Um, and also people who just like to, you know, just like the sound of the topic and might just do, you know, the odd one or two projects that they might be interested in. So there's a whole wide ranging group of different people who might fund the topic. Um, so I think, as I mentioned before, it's, it's about building up a story. You really need to tell the story of what you're trying to do. Um, so you'd be supported in this. I think there's a, a kind of step by step process to go through on the platform um, about how to build your campaign. So you really need to tell, you know, let people know what the, the project you're thinking about is doing. Um, and obviously that example of the kind of supporting the scholarly work in Ukraine, we all know what's been going on in Ukraine and, you know, aware of the terrible events that have been kind of going on there. But your research project might be a little less known, so you might have to tell that story to, to let people know. Um, it's about also kind of telling them what kind of reward you might be able to offer. It's not usually financial, but you can see in this example, people have been offered a Ukrainian literature book. If they give a certain amount of funding so there's these options that you might be able to reward the participants for you know funding the research or whatever the, the campaign is about so it's telling the story telling people what you know the reward might be and getting their interest and getting them to to really get involved and take part in the in the project Okay, so this is the, the kind of build your own campaign kit I mentioned. It's the kind of step-by-step -step process. And I think I'm not going to go too much because I think Elise is going to tell you about this. She's more of an expert in this than, than I am. I've not really that much awareness of it, but basically you'll be supported on the platform to build your story, um, to help find your audience um, and to run your whole campaign. Okay, so just one or two facts and figures. Um, so the science booster is the, the kind of, I've already mentioned, is the, the kind of part of We Make It that would be supporting you to, to kind of really boost the interest and to, to reach people. Um, so I think they've been going five years. Uh, so they launched in January 2017. And it seems to have raised a staggering amount so far. Is that um, 1, 850, euros? Is that correct? It seems... <laughs> I never know what the points are. That's, that's quite a lot of money, total funds raised. And that has been across 108 different project campaigns. And of these 108, um, 80 have been successful, which is a 74% success rate, which seems quite good to me. Um, and we've had over 10,000 10, uh, contributors to these different projects. So, so quite impressive figures, I would say. Okay, so here are some links if you need more information. Um, feel free to go have a look at the Opera's website, um, our own Go Triple project website, and the We Make It um, Opera's project where you can see the actual crowdfunding campaign. 
if you do have any more questions afterwards, I'm actually going to be leaving the project. So please feel free to contact either Sona or Suzanne um, if you wanted more information. Um, and I'm going to hand over now to Elise, who's going to tell you a little bit more about We Make It and how you can sort of, you know, step through the, the, the different project and the, the steps in the process. So thanks very much. If you have any questions at the end after Elise, we can try and answer them for you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paula, uh, for this super nice introduction. And uh, yeah, I think it's a very good overview of crowdfunding with examples and also of our partnership with uh, Operas. Um, so my name is Alizé. I am actually the, the person responsible for the French speaking part um, in Switzerland of We Make It. We make it in a Swiss platform, but we are also, um, we, we enable a fundraising in euros. So it will not make a big difference uh, for you. And we are now the fifth largest platform in Europe. Uh, we have a community of about uh, half a million um, people and uh, contributors, project initiators, and we are celebrating this year our 10th anniversary. Uh, so we have a lot of experience. Our platform is reliable, which is kind of key because when someone wants to make a donation, the process should be easy because otherwise you really lose a contribution. So um, I am thinking now, I, well, when preparing the presentation, um, I, I thought of the best way I could contribute today. And I decided to share with you kind of some of the, the main tips that uh, I can give you as future project initiators to really understand how to best harness the power of crowdfunding to finance your project. Um, I, am, I am also a crowdfunding expert. I coach projects. Uh, I give workshops to uh, entrepreneurs on crowdfunding. And I've run five campaigns. Uh, one is on We Make It, if you are curious. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a non-work related project. It's a personal project. So my first advice is shown on this picture. It's about the community. And I think um, Paula, really emphasized as well that crowdfunding is about a community. It's not just about funding, but now I'm really inviting you to make this effort and think about who is your crowd and who is your community. And well, let me tell you that a lot of people misunderstand the role of their own community, the role that it plays in their crowdfunding campaign a lot of people think that working on a nice page and on a nice storytelling is sufficient um, and that the community is created with, by people scrolling on the internet and, and being on the, on the crowdfunding platform, be it We Make It or any other. Now, listen to this statistic because it will really change your vision. Um, 50 to 70% of your backers, so of your community, basically, that will support your project comes from your own network and direct network, which means family and friends, mostly, but also existing people who know about you or your project. Basically, your mailing list and maybe a little bit of an extended list of that. So this is very, very important because it means that you will have to identify these people and translate your campaign into words that they can understand. So my experience as well with, uh, for example, scientific or research projects is that a lot of the, the people behind those projects are academics or scientists, and they are used to ask for grants or uh, show and get credibility for what they do by showing a lot of evidence, a lot of details, a lot of technical details as well. But really, believe me, your crowd is looking for something else. Your crowd is rather interested into the story behind the project. So who are you as a person? Why are you passionate or why are you researching this? Uh, what is the impact of your research? So the language has to be really adapted to your crowd 
and um, has to be maybe simplified. And this is something that we keep repeating for yeah, scientific research related projects. So that's kind of my first advice, your community, who is it? It's really mostly your direct network. So be careful, make a list and check as well, how big is this list? It will tell you very easily how much money you can fundraise and also adapt the language so that this community can relate and can understand what is your project about. Um, same with the rewards. Crowdfunding works with a system of rewards as it was explained. So you offer them something in exchange for a, a contribution. So think about what would they want to get? And you can be as innovative as you want, but keep in mind um, who is your community and uh, think about what would they want? Do they want to, to buy a project? Do they want something symbolic? Do they want to meet you, to be invited uh, to an event where you present uh, maybe your work? Do they want something completely random? We have a scientific project that we're um, financing a prototype for a 3D coral reef um, reconstitution technology. And they offered socks with corals, very, very kind of funny orange socks with corals. And uh, this reward worked really well because the community wanted to get a little memory of this project that they supported, but it was not necessarily related to the research itself. Um, yeah, so we can move on to the next slide with my second advice. The second advice is to really show yourself. In a crowdfunding campaign, people and backers will be driven less than by facts, but rather by emotions and by the story. And it is really important if you decide to make a crowdfunding that you are ready to show yourself because your story will be super important. Who are the people behind the project? With crowdfunding, it's all about transparency. So people don't donate to an organization necessarily. They, they want to donate and have this direct link with the person behind the project. This link can also be built with the, with the rewards. You can meet your community, invite them to an event, uh, share your knowledge with the community. A lot of experts offer kind of workshops and, and activities with the contributors. So it's really you that you also put forward in the story and in the relation with the backers. Um, ne next advice is communication. So the picture is rather revolution, but actually what I want to say here is that you will have to make a lot of noise. Crowdfunding is about reaching as many people as possible. So the effort is something. You will create a list of people, identify who you are um, communicating to, when, through what media, and it's a, a successful campaign makes a lot of noise and creates a buzz that lasts until the end of the campaign. So it's usually quite short, 30 to 45 days, but the effort is really intense. And unless you are ready to put your project forward um, and communicate, reach out to people, starting with your network, but also thinking of other networks and other groups that could be interested in your project, you have a little chance of success. Now, the good news is, as was explained by Paula, that uh, the, the first five projects with um, our partnership with uh, Operas and We Make It will receive some communication help from the Operas community. So this is a great advantage, but be careful, it's not enough. You will also have to communicate and it's really both that will make the success of your campaign. Um, another advice is also in the way you reach out to people. You have to think, um, as I said, 50 to 70% of the backers will come from your existing and, and personal direct network. So it's, it's in French, I'm sorry. It's you, your family, your friends, your fans, people who know already about you and your project. And then you have the unknown. 
Now think about it strategically. When you start your campaign, it starts with zero out of your total objective. At this stage, if you reach out to people that have never heard of you or never heard of your project, you are very unlikely that these people, even if they click on your page and if they like your project, trust that it's reliable or that it's gonna work to donate for your campaign. People who don't know you will not give you unless they see that your project already has some backers and that you already are closer to reaching your objective. So this is why your communication strategy should always start from the inside, so from your network and then spread out to other people. It will have more, more impact if you already have some backers and the first backers will for sure be people who know you, people who know that even if your project page has zero contribution, they know that you are reliable and they trust you. So you really need this, this team to help you um, to, to get, we call it a 30% of credibility that will help you reach out to the crowd that doesn't know you yet. Um, and then my last uh, advice is about preparation. Um, so Paula mentioned it takes roughly one month. Uh, it's completely true. And uh, I highly recommend you, even if you're just thinking about a crowdfunding, to log in to We Make It, visit the Operas channel and try to already identify um, what is required to create a crowdfunding campaign. Um, how should the text look like if you need pictures? Um, you will also get access to a lot of resource and you will get, most importantly, some help and some support. And the earlier you kind of start this process, the easier it will be for you to have a very nice page and to get the guidance that you need to prepare your communication and your plan and be ready for the launch. It's not like you just prepare everything on your own and then one day before the launch, you, you just open your account and... and like translate your page into the we make it format. Um, this will rush things, but I really recommend you to, to start as early as possible. Um, you will see it's not a heavy process, but you might need support along the way to, to prepare and make sure everything is ready. Um, so I invite you to the next slide uh, to, yeah to check out the Operas channel on We Make It. And um, well, you will see on the next slide how it looks like. So this is a little bit of the Operas page, but basically you click on start a project to create your page. Uh, we can go to the next slide. You will have to log in, very easy, create a profile. And then in the next slide, you will see that you have access to your cockpit. We call it a cockpit. There on the top left, you have an academy with a, a toolkit of very useful resource tips. So it's uh, basically the, the 10 years of We Make It experience that we are sharing with you. Um, no, you can go back. <laughs> yeah, on the academy, it's basically the, the, it's, um, on, the, on the top left academy, it's just like the 10 years of experience that we have that we are sharing with you. We prepared very nice documents, toolkits, templates that you can use and, and a guide to help you prepare your communication, identify your community, etc. And then you will have um, the possibility here to work on your project page, to work on a video, to add photos, to describe your text, to work on your rewards, etc. And uh, to also complete your personal profile, which is very important because um, as I said, you need to show yourself. So you always need to have a personal profile associated with your page. And now how to apply to the Upper S channel on We Make It once you're there and working on your page. So you click on this admin section and then in the next slide, I will show you. Yeah, you select here Upper S. So this will tell the We Make It team that you are willing to join the Upper S channel. Um, and we will provide you with the support um, from the Science Booster team to help you 
make your page better and answer all of your questions. Um, so that's it. Yeah. For my little introduction and information <laughs> about crowdfunding, I hope that you, like, you are now understanding a little bit better what crowdfunding is about and maybe you're getting some ideas for your project. Now it's time for questions. Oh, yeah, I, I wrote here the general, we make it team dedicated to Opera. So you can always write to this address if you have any question and uh, we will be very happy to, to answer any of them. Hola, Alizé, thank you so much. Um, at this point, we don't have any questions in the chat, which uh, I take as a very good sign and um, testimony of your splendid presentation. <laughs> so thank you. And, but I do see we do have questions. Nelson? Uh, yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Shona. Thank you, Paula and Alize for the, the great presentations you did. I'm, I just have some two brief questions that I, I believe they may be uh, quite um, directed to all of us. We are here and are interested in, in using this kind of platforms. Regarding the, um, the financing, normally you talk about to, to the projects should be at least considering the, uh, at first stages, the inner, the inner network. So that means family, maybe friends, colleagues. Tendentiously, that means to, 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 to be a, a kind of neighbor community, and that means they are directed or engaging with a specific language. So I, with the cockpit, um, when you presented the layout of the cockpit, I just saw four languages, German, Italian, French, and English. And although English can really reach to a lot of people, it, it is not the native language of the most part of the people. And those who are the inner's network, normally they don't trust so much in a not not um, native language. So are you thinking on expanding this or there's the possibility of expanding more languages to? Yes, so I will answer and that's a very good question. Thank you for uh, raising that point. So maybe we can go back uh, yeah, to two slides before to the to the cockpit because yeah, here. So you see English, German, French, and Italian. So um, the reason for those languages is that we make it as a Swiss platform. So we have the three official languages plus English. Now, it's not an automatic translation. It's really up to you to translate into up to four languages. Um, and it's also on we make it random people. If your project is in four languages, people can select French and it will be French or German and it will be German. Now, in technical terms, uh, you are making the translation. So you could, for example, have your page in English. And if your community doesn't speak Italian, you could use the Italian tab to translate your text in a totally new language and send the link corresponding to for example, the Italian link to your community. So they will have access to your page in the language that you choose. So to make it short, you have four language options, which are nominative, but you can really, and we have seen it with many projects, you can really customize it as well. The only difference is that uh, on we make it, it won't be shown the option, but if you click it, it will appear in another language. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's super useful to have the campaign in different languages. Thank you. I, I haven't understood that. That's great, that's great. So, okay, so that, that there's no issue at all. I had two more questions, but maybe I, I should give the floor to other colleagues and if no one, uh, and, and then um. bring my questions. We, we do have one question in the, in the chat uh, from Juliana. Oh, it's two. <laughs> um, the, and the question would be, I have some doubts. The first one is, is it mandatory to publish a video? So I will answer that uh, as well. I think the next question will be rather uh, for Sona and, and Paula, but no, the video is not mandatory at all. However, it is highly recommended. The reason for it is that 
we are encouraging uh, project initiators to sh show themselves and a video can be a very nice and easy way to do that. The video doesn't have to be super professional. Um, we have a lot of successful campaigns that did it themselves. And we also provide you a lot of tips um, in the academy section for the video. But yeah, um, since we are targeting or what's, what convinces people in a crowdfunding campaign um, is emotions, basically. A video, you can add music, you can speak with your own words. It makes it like it takes your campaign to a whole other level. So it's highly recommended. If you don't want to use a video, it's really up to you. And it doesn't mean that your project will fail. Um, but in this case, we recommend that you use a lot of pictures. Um, so you really need to illustrate as well who you are, what's your project about, and, and the impact. Thank you so much. And Nelson, are you OK if I take uh, the next question from Paola first? Thank you. Yeah. Um, OK, so the next question from Paola would be, uh, can independent scholars with international academic connections apply? Paula, do you want to answer or shall I? Um, um, that's maybe one for you, because this is where I was like a little bit unsure of the, all the eligibility options. Um, as far as I'm aware, yes, but <laughs> you can maybe confirm that, Sona, because I think you'd looked at some of the Q&A, um, you know, some of the previous questions that have been asked about eligibility. So yeah, I think so, but can you can you confirm? Okay, so, so I, I will confirm with uh, some conditions. So yes, but it depends. Uh, and it depends in the sense that um, since OPERAS is a research infrastructure bound to the European research area, um, researchers from the European research area, meaning the 27 European countries, can apply no matter what. So if they're independent, if they're not independent, if they're affiliated with an institution, it basically doesn't matter. You can uh, apply. That is no, not an issue. If you are, however, not uh, by nationality from the European research area, um, so for example, if you're from Brazil, um, you would need to have some kind of affiliation with um, a research institution in Europe. Um, yes, so that's the condition for applying, but it is not connected to being independent or affiliated with an institution. Um, it's only connected to having some connection to the European research area that being by being born in the European research area, or well, more precisely having the nationality, um, or being affiliated with a research institution within the European research area. I hope that uh, clarifies that. Okay. Um, so, Nelson, your turn. Okay. Um, uh, I have two questions. I will ask one, and then if, if we have time, the second. Uh, about collaborations, I'm not sure if I'm asking too much, uh, but uh, regarding uh, for, for for those who are uh, applying for for this crowdfunding, is it possible to have um, a kind of uh, how can I say a community a network community uh, where people could meet uh, could meet the projects of others in a different way than the the the, the potential um, supporters in order to help uh, help them or gather some skills that they may not have. The first one that came to my mind is, for example, the translations into other languages. So help use the others to spread your own project and also help the others to spread their projects by facilitating simple things like I can translate your um, text or, or I can provide you some person that may, get, uh, may uh, do what you want to do in an easier way. Is that possible or not? Or, or, or is something that is predicted already? So are you asking if this is like a support that we make it provide, for example? Uh, I, I'm saying if there will be a kind of space where this network could be uh, created or, or engaged, or it will 
just be the plain uh, platform and those who want to, to meet people from other projects, they have to dig in in the projects. I'm not sure if I'm I'm explaining myself very well. I'm sorry. After lunch, my my no, don't worry. <laughs> no, so so I will try to answer and and hopefully it's it's clear. So as a as a platform, we make it will not facilitate um, the community like will it's not a networking platform basically. So there are two two different things and they are distinct. The first is how your project is visible on our platform. So it will be visible on our um, main page where all the projects are listed. And then you can be picked. Um, I do it every Monday <laughs> to, to our, uh, we call it the, 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 the coup de coeur, the, the, the favorite project. And so you will be pinned on the top of the page for one week. And I will definitely make your project uh, <laughs> if I see your name. Um, then you can also be uh, picked by We Make It for promotion on social on our social media with our community, uh, and, and uh, same with the newsletter. But this is not something that we we guarantee to all projects, obviously. Uh, but this is something that uh, that can happen, and this is also something that we offer um, as a paid service, some promotion, but. Anyway, this visibility is rather the visibility that you will get on our platform. So the visibility towards the We Make It community and, and broader community or the web community. Okay, now We Make It is, a, is very uh, well known. So it's also likely that uh, it appears in the, in the research um, engine of people looking at crowdfunding, if they are interested. So that being said, it's the, the first visibility. Then the second visibility, it's not something that we make it can take care of, but it's the effort of the project initiators to send the project page as a communication tool. The project page has all of your information or all of the project information to send it to all of your network, family, friends, extended network, individually and this will have a lot more impact because it's direct communication it's also uh, personalized you can say hey this is my project i've been working on it for i don't know how many years i'm now launching a crowdfunding do you want to support me so this will be done by the project initiator not by we make it and uh, we make it helps you but in terms of advice and we we will give you some tips in the academy to, to help you kind of think about how, how you create a communication plan to send the link to your page. Um, and actually, lastly, there is a third communication that will take part for the first five projects that are in the Upper S channel. And this will be a communication uh, with a in collaboration with an agency that works with Upper S. Right, Sona? So this is a, yes. a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I, I might might add to that just to, to cover yeah. that up. And uh, I mean, I totally second all of uh, what Alize said. Um, I just wanted to point out the main advantages of the Opera's crowdfunding channel is uh, not that you have a stamp saying Opera's on it, but uh, the fact that we, of course, if you submit it via this channel and it is uh, considered eligible. Um, we will circulate it within the Opera's community, which reaches through 27 European countries. Um, so there is some kind of outreach guaranteed. I mean, it's obviously in quotation marks. So, so either we, since it's new, we don't know um, what actual effect is gonna get, gonna be there for them. But uh, you will have the support of the Opera's community, um, and you will have the support of the Science Boost for every project submitted via the Opera's channel, which is, um, as Paula has described, a tool that is specifically designed to give advice on scientific communication. Um, and of course, you the first five projects being submitted are um, going to be supported by um, the work of a communication agency. So they, these are mainly the um, advantages, <laughs> if you can call them like that, um, of the Opera's crowdfunding channel in comparison to just submitting a, just submitting, um, a crowdfunding project. 
And Nelson, before you ask your second question, would you be okay if we uh, had took a look at Juliana's questions? Okay, great, thank you. Because I think uh, these are quite easy to answer for obviously. So the first one would be in which section can we submit the second, uh, these two recommendation letters? And uh, the next one would be, do we receive all the amount or are there taxes included? So the recommendation letters are a specific requirements from UPRS. So the, the letters will be sent uh, to UPRS directly. So we will manage it by email. But the first step would be to apply to the UPRS channel as I showed you. Once you've done that, our team will take care of asking you for the letter and, and putting you in touch with the right person to send the letters. So it's not done on the platform directly. A second question. Um, so uh, it's a very good question. No, you don't receive all the amount. Um, there are 4% that cover the payment fees and, and associated costs, plus 6% that cover um, the We Make It fee and that helps our platform remain independent and that pays for our developers and everything. So you will get 90% of the total amount. And some very important information there as well is that we make it works with the, the principle of all or nothing, which means that you need to be really careful when you set your objective to make sure that it's reachable and make sure that you are prepared enough because if you don't reach the full amount, the money will get back to the backers and you will not receive part of it. We really do it not to uh, penalize you, in any case, we rather do it to guarantee that the money will only be used to develop and realize the project. So we assume that the amount is the, the minimum needed. And below that, the money cannot be used for the project. That's why we have this, uh, this rule. Thank you so much. Um, Nelson, do you want to pose the last question uh, or your last question? <laughs> Yes, uh, it's but but I would like to emphasize because I, I'm I'm not sure if that part was was answered by Alize regarding taxes because I I think that was and this is something that is is important uh, for us if you can also answer on that and, and then um, I don't know if it is you thought about um, to give some aid on the report stage because some. I don't know, well, maybe one of the hardest part of this kind of procedures may not be to perform the research, which is well planned and that stuff, but is to um, to report the research for those who are uh, supporting it, sponsoring it um, without, uh, how can I say, without just um, lose on their expectations or at least go lower on their expectations. And some of us don't have a good preparation on on communication on that side, at least those who are purely deep uh, in, into science and only recently just start to work with the community. Uh, I don't I don't know if you have thought about that, about some extra support for reporting or some clues, sometimes some 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 tips that could help. Yes. So for the communication with your community and uh, I would say specifically with your backers, the people who have supported your project financially, you have a, a button on your project page called update that will send a notification to all of the backers, which means that during the campaign, you can say thank you. And you can also say, this is how the campaign is going. All the most people will refresh the page every day because they are super excited. Um, to see how the campaign is, is running. And you can also use this button after the project to keep your community, the backers, informed about the next steps and how the project is going. And actually, you really should do that because it's a very important uh, part of why people support projects with crowdfunding. It's because they really want to be part of the adventure and, and hear about the, um, the future of the project. Um, also, once your project is finished and in case of success, you will receive a list or you can download a list of backers and access them directly. 
Um, so this is like my answer for that. And for the tax, I cannot really answer um, because it depends on a lot of factors. So you need to take into account in your budget 10% uh, from that, that will be deduced with the fees. We make it fees and uh, payment fees. And then for the tax, it depends on whether you are receiving the money as an individual, a private person, or as a society. It depends on the country. Um, it depends if you are offering kind of a product in exchange or some or product that you will be selling. So the information is very specific and it also depends on the country. So this you will need to check um, locally to get the information on whether your revenue will be taxed or not. It's, it can be a revenue, but it can also be a donation. Thank you so much for clearing that up and Nelson for um, asking the follow-up question. Um, I don't see any more questions. Did I oversee something? Okay, please keep in mind that if any questions, no worries, uh, if any questions arise later, you can still contact me um, as put down on a slide or as you uh, can see by the email you have received to, um, or you, thank you so much, or you can contact, um, we make it directly uh, via the email address uh, Alize is showing right now, or more to be exact, Paula. Um, since we have three minutes left, we don't want to uh, waste this precious time. <laughs> and I would give the word to my uh, dear colleague Lorena for a quick evaluation. And if you can stay a little bit longer, it would be great if you could fill out this evaluation of the event um, because it helps us improve in the events of this kind in the future. So for all of you who have to leave, thank you so much for attending. I hope you all have a pleasant day. And um, we are looking forward to receiving a lot of new projects via the crowdfunding channel. Enjoy your week. And I'll now give the word to Lorena. So I sent, hello everyone, I, I sent the link in the chat if you can enter and I can share my screen so you can see in which page I am. Let me check if I can share. Mm, yes. Do you see the Menti page? Okay. <clears throat> We have only two answers. I'm going to wait a little bit more. OK, nice. Yeah, thanks. That's super positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the next, OK? Do you see the next one? OK. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pass to the next one. It's nice to see that people are thinking the session is useful. <laughs> I hope you submit your projects. Okay, I'm going to pass to the next one now. Uh, more people are voting now. I wanted to see more things written in the first one, but okay. Next one. Nice. And I'm going to pass to the next one. Thank you, everyone. You have really good answers. <laughs> mm. 
mais. And we had just one or two more. Thank you for keep answering. And I enjoy this moment to say that for people who are in the different countries, I know that I see my colleagues from Portugal here, we will do uh, sessions in national uh, languages. So if you recommend the session to colleagues, please do, because we will uh, disseminate this soon. And I think this is the last one. Thank you, everyone. So, Sona, you want to say something or about so everyone can keep um, following us on social media to see what else we are going to say about crowdfunding? You want to yeah, say absolutely. <laughs> as, as soon as I uh, copy paste it <laughs> on Twitter uh, handle. So if you are interested, please follow us on Twitter. And of course, you can always um, look up the website I posted in the chat earlier. This is our Twitter handle. And uh, you are more than welcome to be put on the triple mailing list, which I uh, asked in the registration form. So those of you who answered yes will receive notifications no matter what they decide now. <laughs> of course, you can uh, subscribe. So um, I hope all of you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Paula and Alize for presenting. Thank you, Lorena, for um, being responsible for the evaluation. And um, have a nice day, all of you. Bye. Bye, thanks. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.